Hi everyone, it's Ben from Trekkit and I'm here in the Iron Gate Bothy today to go over Rab's brand new range of sleeping mats. So Rab are just entering the sleeping mat game which is a little bit strange considering they've been making sleeping bags since 1981. So it's about time that they came out for an entire sleep system and then they pretty much got you covered with everything. Over the course of this video we'll go through what all these different mats are, what they do and who they're primarily designed for. But Rab have got you covered whether you're sort of an entry level camper right the way through to sort of the alpinists among us and mountaineers that are potentially going to be going on longer expeditions. These mats will cover you right down to the coldest temperatures. So we'll go through them and uh, find out a little bit more about them. So first and foremost, what are the different mats? So Rab have broken down the sleeping mats into three different models. So you have the exosphere, the stratosphere, and the ionosphere. Yes, there are four mats here because they're slightly different shapes to the models, and there are a few different variations of them, but essentially they're broken down into those three families. Starting with the exosphere, this guy here, is a self-inflating mat. So that has the advantage of being able to open the valve and you leave it to inflate most of the way, and then it just needs a little bit of topping up with air to get to your desired level of comfort. It's Rab sort of entry point into the mat range, but it's also potentially a little bit more reliable in the sense that because it's got that foam in it, which we'll go a little bit more into later in the video, that foam will still work even if you do get a puncture, so you still have some level of comfort and insulation. The other mats in the range have um, baffles on them and they are all inflatable mats. Rab also include a pump sack with all of those so that you can then inflate the mats when you are using them but if they get a puncture, they will provide no insulation. So depending on your end use, you might end up wanting to go for something like the exosphere that is a self-inflating mat versus the stratosphere or the ionospheres, which are inflatable. Advantages and disadvantages both ways. The exosphere will be a little bit bigger in terms of its pack size, although Rab have done something quite clever to limit the size of, of the pack size with it, which again, we'll go into later. But it's potentially, as I say, a little bit more appropriate if you are concerned about punctures and things like that. Now, all of these mats do come with an R value associated with them. So the numbers on the mat, so after the name, like on the exosphere here, this one is the 3.5. I've got a stratosphere 4, an ionosphere 5, and an ionosphere 5.5. That roughly equates to the R values of the mats. Now, R values, in very simple terms, refer effectively to kind of the old school way of a season rating. So R1 is strictly a summer mat, R2, sort of two season, R3, et cetera, et cetera, right the way up to five plus, which goes into sort of expedition level or very cold temperatures. There is more of an explainer that will pop up uh, linked to the blog on that we've got on R values where it explains that now, uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about R values, but essentially the bigger the number, the warmer the mat will be. So it keeps it nice and simple. So starting with the fabrics of all of these mats, they do have some similarities. Uh, for this example, I'm gonna start with the Exosphere 3.5, which is a self-inflating one. So the majority of the RAB mats use a 20 denier recycled polyester, um, the exosphere included. The outlier in this range is the stratosphere, that one. I'm pointing at the ionosphere, but I was meaning the stratosphere. So the stratosphere uses a 75 denier recycled polyester because it's designed to be slightly more general purpose. But other than that, all the fabrics are 20 denier. They all have a uh, fluorocarbon free DWR on them to help with uh, a little bit of moisture management, any accidental spills, things like that. And they feel nice and durable, nice and tough, but dropping to a 20 denier fabric just means that the pack size and weight is a little bit smaller, which is especially important with something like the exosphere, because traditionally self-inflating mats like the exosphere will use a um, solid piece of foam that runs throughout the mat. That means that the pack size can't go down super small. Um, and they will use a hardier denier fabric on the outside. Rab have flipped this on their head a little bit, so there's still uh, an open cell foam inside here so that when you open the valve on the mat, it inflates. But Rab have actually used something called X-Core in their foam, where they've essentially drilled horizontal and vertical holes throughout the mat, so you can hopefully see on the overhead camera sort of this dimpled texture. These are effectively holes through the mat that help it inflate slightly quicker and also mean that you can roll the mat away and make it slightly smaller and also pack it away slightly lighter. And that 20 denier outer material also then makes the pack size a little bit smaller. Just in case you do have any issues with punctures, because anything that holds air is potentially prone to that, 
Rab have included puncture repair kits in all of the mats. So not just the exosphere, but the ionosphere and the stratosphere as well, you will get uh, puncture repair kits in, which is a nice little add-on feature. The last thing to mention about the exosphere is it's around five centimeters thick. So it is a little bit thinner than the other mats that come in around eight centimeters thick, but if five centimeters is still plenty comfortable to, to lie down on. It's just worth bearing in mind that if you want super luxury, sort of high fill mats, you're probably gonna be looking at the rest of the range rather than the exosphere, but five centimeters is still plenty for a nice bit of comfort. That mat's gonna fall over during filming. Moving on to the stratosphere, we've got the four here, but they also do the stratosphere in a 5.5. Uh, although technically, technically this mat has an R value of 3.8. So earlier in the video, I said that the numbers roughly equate to the R value. That means that this one does come just shy of four and that mat's still moving behind me. So watch it just fall over in a second. But the stratosphere, as I mentioned just a minute ago, does have a 75 denier out of fabric. So it feels really substantial. Um, and is designed primarily as that sort of general purpose mat. It's a little bit burlier, which means the pack size is gonna be a little bit bigger, but you've got more reliability in the sense that the um, outer fabrics will be a little bit tougher. Now, when it comes to the insulation, Rab have chosen to use Stratus R synthetic insulation, which is completely recycled uh, from post-consumer waste, which is fantastic because it means that you're using material that would otherwise end up in landfill. So you're keeping that out of the system a little bit longer, reusing it, something like this. There's no difference in performance between using the recycled stuff and something that would be virgin. So it's a bit of a win-win from an eco standpoint because you're using material that otherwise ended up in landfill. So you can hopefully sleep well knowing that. Now, the other thing that Rab have done with that insulation that's throughout this mat, in the four, it's at 160 grams per square meter. Uh, in the 5.5, it jumps up to 250 grams per square meter. So that's quite a lot of insulation. But with that insulation, they've actually bonded it to the top and bottom layers of the fabric. Think a bit like a sandwich. So when you inflate these baffles, it actually pulls that insulation apart and means that it lofts better and holds more warmth because it's stuck at two points and those points are being pulled apart when you inflate these baffles. That's actually pretty smart because it means that all of that air will circulate between them and you get more insulative properties from the mat, which is a really nice idea. All of, the, all of the other mats, apart from the exosphere, so the stratosphere and the ionosphere, are all eight centimeters thick. So this is a really thick mat that is sort of super chunky, really comfortable to sleep on, which is gonna keep you insulated from the ground and just be more comfortable, especially if you're a side sleeper, sort of rolling onto your side, this will be a little bit more comfortable. You also get slightly bigger baffles on the outer edges on these, which we'll go into a little bit more in the feature set, but it's a, it's a nice to have basically. Moving on to the Ionosphere 5, it's worth mentioning that the 5 is tapered, whereas if you jump up to the 5.5 that I've got behind me, the orange one there, that one is a rectangular mat. So depending on your needs for comfort and also shape in terms of whether you're sharing a tent with someone else, if you've got a slightly tapered tent or if you're top and tailing, the tapered mat might make more sense or if you want a little bit more luxury, then the rectangular one works as well. So the iron spheres drop back down to 20 denier, recycled polyester. So a little bit lighter, smaller pack size, uh, which is especially important considering the extra R value that you get with this. You want to kind of offset that for the pack size as much as you can because the environments you're using these in, you probably don't want to be carrying any more weight than you absolutely have to. So a tapered mat like this with 20 denier fabric is kind of a good thing to have. But I personally, if I can fit it in, we'll be going for a rectangular one because I prefer a little bit more comfort. Anyway, I digress. So the Ionosphere 5 uses uh, the same Stratos insulation as the Stratosphere, but it uses a lot less of it. So this only uses 80 grams per square meter, which might not sound like much at all. However, Rab have used something called Tilt. So Tilt or a, a Tilt scrim lining in this, this mat effectively uh, is something called thermoionic lining technology. It helps if you cross your eyes when you say it, if you think about it. So thermoionic lining technology. Um, that essentially affects uh, radiant heat loss by around 15%. So it reflects back some of that body heat, a little bit like emergency foil blankets, uh, emergency bivvies, things like that. So effectively you get a mat that is much lighter for its warmth rating, which is why the R value of this guy is 4.8 and the other one, the 5.5 has an R value of actually 5.5. So you get a really cool bit of tech inside the mat 
that doesn't add a meaningful amount of weight to it for something that is then warmer. With the Ionosphere 5.5, as well as being rectangular, it does have a bigger R value, and that is mostly attributed to the Stratus insulation jumping up to 200 grams per square meter. So that really is the big boy if you need something that goes down to super cold temperatures, that's also really comfortable, really insulative, that's the map for you. Moving on to the features, the Exosphere has slightly less of them because it's a little bit more basic, but you still get a nice little repair kit, which is integrated into the stuff sack. So everything stuffs back down into this bag. And Rab also include a little instruction tab in there as well, which is quite useful because it shows you how to repair the mat should you need to, um, and also how to inflate it. This stuff sack is a nice little burrito roll that has elasticated straps on it that when you roll the mat back away and pop it in here, it holds it together nicely. So sort of inbuilt compression. The Exosphere's other feature is then a two-way valve. So this two-way valve, when you're inflating this mat, you want it completely open. Uh, so you pop the second stage of this valve to open the mat and then just leave it to inflate completely. Otherwise, if you need to adjust the amount of air that's in the mat, if like at the moment, I've got it quite firm, you wanted to drop a little bit of air out of the mat, then you can just open the other stage of the valve and press in and uh, deflate the mat just a little bit to your desired level of comfort. Moving on to the stratosphere, you share a lot of similar features as you did with the exosphere. So you get a little integrated repair kit with all of those instructions as to how to repair and also how to inflate this mat and the stuff sack with integrated straps. So there's no compression straps, it's all on elastic, which is actually really nice. And then the little burrito fold that rolls in over the top to secure everything in. But because the stratosphere is inflatable, you also get a pump sack. Now this guy has a little valve on the end, which I'm going to close for this, but this valve would go over the two-way valve that's on this mat. And this acts as your pump. So imagine that is on the mat itself, and then you blow this up and squeeze it in. And Rab have even put some nice little eyes on it, so you've got a little, little elephant friend to um, pump up your mat, which is always nice. Um, but this guy makes pumping up the mat really efficient. You want to be using a pump sack, especially on an inflatable mat, especially in um, sort of moisture conditions, because introducing moist air, i.e. breath, inside a mat will shorten the lifespan of your mat significantly. Our breath has quite a lot of bacteria in it, and that moisture getting inside the mat is quite bad for the overall health of the mat. You know, topping it up a little bit here and there with a little bit of breath won't do the mat any harm, but if you're repeatedly inflating this mat with um, moist air, it's gonna shorten the lifespan of your mat. So using a pump sack like this and using a bit of a vortex effect, so I'm not blowing right into the mat with my face in there, blowing from further back. And then you can squeeze, get a high volume of air that is really rather dry by comparison to your breath. And then inflating the mat, it's also very efficient. You'll inflate the mat like this. When you get good at it, in sort of three to four puffs with this guy, with the two-way valve that's on the back side of the mat. Just gonna chuck those on there. So using that valve there, same thing goes again for inflating. You want one open. For deflating, you would open the other one and all the air would then come out. With this guy, the stratosphere has those bigger baffles on the outside edge. The idea with that is the mat effectively cradles you in the middle portion of the mat, so you're less likely to roll off the mat or slide off it in the night. It does also have a slight texture to the top of the mat to grip your sleeping bag a little bit as well. Finally, the ionospheres. Both of them have exactly the same feature sets when it comes to what's included. So again, you get that repair kit the instructions and the pump sack in, inside the elasticated stuff sack. You get a two-way valve on the back of the mat. Um, the main differences with the ionospheres are the five is tapered. Um, both of them still have that sort of grippy texture on top of them for sleeping mats, but the 5.5 then goes to rectangular in terms of shape. Still has the bigger baffles on the outer edge, um, but the ionosphere five, the tapered one, is slightly more suitable if you're camping top and tail, or you're in a smaller tent, maybe a bivy even, uh, whereas the Ionosphere 5.5 being rectangular is a little bit more comfortable, but also a little bit bigger pack size. Um, finally, it's worth mentioning that all of these mats are available in long versions. All of the long versions are also wide because 
the astute among you might have noticed that I am a little bit taller than these mats that are propped up behind me. So for all you long boys out there, they do do uh, long versions of these mats as well, which is a nice to have. So when it really comes down to it, which mat should you be choosing from Rab's range? If your plan is for something that's gonna be a little bit more budget conscious, but also something that's gonna be super reliable, and even if you do happen to get a puncture, will still work, then the Exosphere is definitely the mat for you. It is slightly bigger in terms of pack size, but it's super reliable and is a little bit more budget conscious. If you want a little bit more of an all-rounder, then you should be looking more towards the Stratosphere. It's a little bit more comfortable, has a slightly better pack size and um, weight given its overall comfort and is still super durable at 75 denier. If your end goal is something with the smallest, lightest pack size that's also going to be the warmest, then one of the ionospheres. If you're in a bivy or you want to save even more weight, then the ionosphere 5 um, in tapered format is going to work better. If you want a little bit more comfort or you're going super, super cold, then the ionosphere 5.5 is going to be the one. And then it's just double checking that you get the right length and width mat for yourself. So that about wraps up our summary of the RAB sleeping mats. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight into the range. If you would like to shop the entire range and see everything, every variation that we have of the RAB mats, there'll be a link on the screen somewhere now. I'm going to uh, pack all these mats away, but not before I have a bit of a princess in the pea moment to see how many of these mats I can balance on. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Less dramatic than I thought. Yeah, this is actually really stable.